Hello, my name is Hassini Ravi Sankar, and you're listening to Hassini 1010 for the class CMCI 1010. Today, I'll be addressing the issue of the use of Native Americans as mascots in sports. I've interviewed real Native Americans, as well as a fan of the Chicago Blackhawks, to help me understand the underlying factors of this heated debate. Well, you know, it's harmful, for one thing, disrespectful. I guess it's just about everything bad that you could think. It uh, really reflects uh, on younger children in, in schools or even in colleges that have these, uh, have you know, Indian mascots there. Uh, you know, it, it shows them that they're not wanted, you know, that uh, people don't look at them as human beings. You know, they look at them upon, you know, as mascots. There's no other group of people anywhere that are mascots. This is Ray Ramirez. He works at the Native American Rights Fund right here in Boulder, Colorado. The Native American Rights Fund, also known as NARF, specializes in providing legal assistance to Native American individuals and organizations who might otherwise go unassisted. Ray is an editor over at NARF and writes all of their grants as well as their annual reports. I also had the chance to talk to Sadie Sago, a Native American student here at CU, studying MCDB and Integrative Physiology, as well as minoring in the practice and study of leadership. Sago takes part as an integral role in the Oyate Native American Student Organization, which serves as a support center for Native American students and offers an atmosphere where they can come together to share their unique cultures, backgrounds, and traditions. Oyate is a social, cultural, and activism group. So we do a lot of um, social things with each other. We get together, um, do, you know, fried bread, potluck, or whatever. We have meetings about what kind of events we want to put on on campus. More like awareness events. Like, we just had Native American Heritage Month um, just um, last month, and we did a lot of um, things um, regarding to Native culture and how modern-day Natives are portrayed. Being able to talk to Sadie helped me understand the perspective of someone who's closer to my age, but then also having to deal with the troublesome ways of how media and sports portray her heritage. My tribes are Zuni, Pueblo, and Mescalero Apache. I think it's unacceptable, you know. I don't portray myself like that at all, you know. Just, I guess the image is very popular. Definitely on campus, you see, like, um, you know, everywhere, you yeah. know, like on hats, sweatshirts, keychains, you see it everywhere. And it's like, um, I'm just really, at first I was really proactive about it. I was like, hey, do you know why you're wearing that? Oh yeah, that's like my favorite team, you know, I like that. I'm like, you know, that it's pretty offensive what you're wearing right now. And it's not, I don't really like that. It's like, so like, what do I don't care about your opinion, whatever, you know. Talking to both Ray and Sadie and listening to their utter frustration made me frustrated. So by the time I came around to chat with someone who was indeed a fan of a sport ball team with an Indian mascot, I was feeling just a little bit hostile. Being so oblivious to something that is clearly and blatantly racist just didn't register with me. But then I met Alex Tereskin. Alex is a student at CU and a devoted Chicago Blackhawks fan. Alex is also maybe one of the nicest people I've ever encountered on campus. This characteristic about him made my obvious bias falter and approach this difficult topic as more of a conversation. So growing up in Chicago, were you always a, a Blackhawks fan? The first team that I looked up to and the first team that I really became a diehard fan for. Uh -huh. Why is that? Well, for me, I started playing hockey at a really young age when I was about four or five years old. Well, I started skating when I was three. And then I started playing when I was about four or five years old. And my dad, he's always been a huge sports fan, and he kind of taught my brother and I the whole sports scene and what it's like to be a fan. And there was just something about the Blackhawks at the time that really got my attention, and I've been loving them ever since. After realizing that I wasn't just dealing with your average Joe type of hockey fan, and that I was actually talking to someone whose roots of fandom started at birth, I asked him the reasons behind his devotion for the Blackhawks. Well, for one, they're an original six hockey team in which when the NHL first began, the National Hockey League, there were six teams that first started out, and that it was the Toronto Maple Leafs, New York Rangers, Montreal Canadiens, Boston Bruins, Detroit Red Wings, and the Chicago Blackhawks. So to know that your franchise was one of the very first to start up the league, that's something special. 
and just to know that playing in a sport that you can relate to and also just watching players that give it uh, their full heart and effort every night, that's what's uh, pretty meaningful and special to me. But then Alex said something that reminded me exactly of what someone who was blinded by fandom would say. I could see how it's offensive, but I guess what they're trying to do is resemble that kind of fight, that kind of grit, that kind of spirit that the Black Hawk tribe and also the Black Hawk division, the U.S. Army, presented that no matter what kind of fight they're in, they're always going to come out as being the victor. This is exactly the kind of racial stereotype that real Native Americans have been trying to fight for ages. These kinds of tropes are harmful because it suggests that real Native Americans are lesser people due to the negative connotations attached to the imagery of being only fighting machines. It depicts Native Americans as a thing of the past and affects the way present Native Americans are seen. People like to argue that the Native American mascots stand for bravery and grit, but in reality, what these people were fighting for was a land and culture that was stolen by white American imperialism. You know, people always say, you know, well, we're doing this to honor you. Well, that's bullshit. You know, plain and simple. You know, they're not honoring everybody. They're disrespecting everyone. And, uh, and it is. It's extremely, extremely disparaging and disrespectful. Both Sadie and Ray voice their concern with how society has depicted their existence as something that belongs in the past. Um, a lot of people see us as like past or um, just seeing ourselves in our traditional regalia, traditional clothes, whatever, and they don't really see us as like a present person. You know? Well, you know, I, th I think the root goes all the way back to education. You know, there, there isn't a school in this country, except maybe in the last couple of years, some uh, states have started uh, implementing uh, different curriculums, but you learn absolutely nothing about Indian people in your history books. Nothing. Um, as far as most people are concerned, you know, uh, Indigenous people are a thing of the past. They don't exist anymore. Uh, so we can think however we want to think about them, because they're not around. According to the organization United to End Genocide, what was once a land to 10 million Native Americans in the 15th century, every one of them belonging to a unique tribe and culture, was reduced to an estimated 300,000 by the early 19th century. Historians have argued for years that the Euro-American conquest resulted in implicit genocide. While I understand and relate with the underlying passion of what it's like to be a fan and even how deep those roots can be, I hope that we as a society can take a couple steps towards understanding the historical context behind the use of Native American mascots. These mascots are based upon a tragic history of loss, stolen identity, and rampant racism. I believe more awareness can be raised by thorough education on Native American history in schools, policy changes in both national and collegiate leagues, and overall education for the public. This has been a podcast for Hassini's 1010 blog. I would like to thank Ray Ramirez, Sadie Sago, and Alex Treskin for taking the time to talk with me. Thank you for listening.